Mr. Oft was just a run-of-the-mill 40-year-old teacher divorced twice and a loving husband and father to his stepdaughter. That was at least until one day that he started to suffer from persistent headaches, and he had felt an uncontrollable urge for the pornographic. At this stage, everything was all legal, but the hedonic treadmill, it would begin to turn. Rapidly, he went from the innocent to the depraved, and eventually towards the illegal. Every step, he knew it was wrong, immoral, and in some cases, even illegal. Mr. Oft just felt powerless to stop himself from acting upon these urges to view and amass a collection. Soon, just viewing wasn't enough, and Mr. Oft found himself visiting massage parlors, and when that wasn't enough, he did the unthinkable and turned his attention to his preteen stepdaughter. Thankfully, for her sake, Mr. Oft never got past the flirtation stage. And while this creeped out the young girl, she thankfully was not completely scarred for life, for she ran swiftly to her mother about this before things truly devolved any further. The mother was rightfully furious at her husband and quite literally threw him out of the house. Very soon afterwards, he found his collection of illicit porn and immediately contacted the authorities. In court, Mr. Oft had tears in his eyes as he pleaded and begged the judge for help. He knew that everything he did was both immoral and illegal. He just claimed that he was not in control over his actions. The judge heard his pleas, and he gave Mr. Oft a serious ultimatum. Either pass a simple 12-step program, or face prison. And despite this extremely lenient ruling, Mr. Oft could not get through a single hour of this course without hitting on the other patients or even reaching for the staff. He knew he basically won the lottery with this sentence, only needing to pass a simple course and walk away a free man, but he could not control his urges, and he faced prison. On the night before his sentencing, he arrived at the hospital with complaints of a migraine and fears over his desires to assault his landlord. When the doctors noticed that he had trouble maintaining his balance and appeared unconcerned with the fact that he had soiled himself, they suspected that something else was seriously wrong with the man. When they scanned his brain, the entire field of neuroscience had just found one of the most groundbreaking cases. For you see, Mr. Off's headaches were the result of an egg-sized tumor in his orbital frontal cortex. This tumor altered his brain's structure and function. And just what was the function of this orbital frontal cortex, you ask? Well, it just so happens to be responsible for decision-making, social behavior, and impulse control. And upon removal of said tumor, all of his illicit urges stop, and he returned to a normal level of cognitive function, where before he would struggle to write and draw the time on an analog clock, he was now able to do so perfectly. Within a week, he was able to successfully complete the Sexaholics Anonymous program, and within seven months was deemed by his doctors to not be a threat to his stepdaughter, and was allowed to return home. <laughs> like you, I scoffed at this. It's awfully convenient that the tumor that happened to cause everything was found the day before he went to prison. This is where the case becomes utterly terrifying. For Mr. Oft began to suffer from persistent headaches in the following year, and with those headaches, he entered into the same vicious cycle once again. When another MRI scan was done, the doctors had found that the tumor had once again returned. And when this one was removed, Mr. Oft never again showed any signs of his uncontrollable urges. In the doctor's own words, patient developed paraphilia late in his fourth decade, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition. His symptoms resolved with the excursion of a right orbital frontal hemioparasitoma, further establishing causality. This is a medically technical way of stating that the tumor was the exact cause and reason for the actions of Mr. Oft, so the letter of the law was forced to concede that Mr. Oft was compelled by forces beyond his control despite being against what the spirit of the law was meant to stop. According to the doctors on this case, this is the first description of paraphilia as a specific manifestation of orbital frontal syndrome. But as they outline in the reports, citing the works of Saver J. L. Damancio, 
a R preserved access and processing of social knowledge, and Blair RJR Cipollotti impaired social response reversal that the orbital frontal cortex is involved in the regulations and social behavior, where lessons acquired very early in life impede social and moral knowledge, acquisition resulting in poor judgment, reduced impulse control, and sociopathy. The same thing is noticed with acquired sociopathy that occurs with adult onset damage, while previously established moral development is preserved. With Mr. Oft, if you recall, he knew the difference between moral right and moral wrong. He just apparently lost the ability to choose not to act upon his impulses. This truly terrifying part of this case is how it prompted the neuroscience community to return to the age-old philosophical question, are we free? And their unsettling answer is that alongside the case of Phineas Gage, this case is further proof of a deterministic world. Philosophical determinism is the view that all events are determined completely by previously existing causes. This is not to be confused with the concept of fatalism or reductionism, where the former is the belief that events are predetermined and inevitable, while the latter is the idea that complex phenomena can be reduced to their constituent parts and explained solely in terms of their physical properties. Think of a billiards game. If you can trace back every ball's movement, you can return back to the point before the break. Determinism acknowledges that prior events influence our behavior, but do not necessarily entail being fatalistic or reductionist. Mr. Off's urges were caused by the physical presence of a tumor in his brain, which altered his brain structure and his function. When said tumor was removed, this caused another change in his brain that eliminated his urges. This chain of cause and effect suggests that Mr. Off's behavior was predetermined by the physical forces in his brain. As identified earlier with the link of brain damage in adults leading to acquired sociopathy, proving that damage to specific brain regions can lead to changes in personality, decision-making, and emotional processing. In some cases, these changes can be profound and long-lasting, suggesting that our behavior is heavily influenced by our biology. The world of neuroscience has even gone as far as using magnets to turn study participants from ordinary men into clinically diagnosed psychopaths, at least temporarily. For the brain will, in less than a day, recognize that it is not at its normal and will repair the so-called damage it has received. Some studies have also shown that the opposite end of the spectrum is possible, and making a psychopath into an empathetic machine only for the brain to, once again, repair the so-called damage it has received. Which actually opens up another question upon the case of Mr. Off. It was proven that the tumor was a force beyond his control that made him act upon his urges, but they could not prove that those urges ever existed before. This could prove a compatibilistic worldview, which argues that determinism and free will can coexist. This means that his actions can be both predetermined by prior causes and yet still be freely chosen. In the case of Mr. Oft, this means that while his actions may have been influenced by changes in his brain chemistry, he still had a degree of control over his actions, at least prior to the tumor's complete hijacking. But even then, he had control over when to seek out medical advice. He just chose to let the unknown ailment at the time take over while he indulged in his hedonistic fantasies. I want you to consider the role of intentionality in decision-making. While Mr. Off's actions may have been influenced by his brain injury, he may have already had the intentions and desires that guided his behavior. These intentions and desires were not determined by the prior cause of the tumor, but were actually the result of his own conscious reflection and deliberation. In this way, Mr. Off's urges could have previously existed, but prior to the tumor and post-surgery, was able to choose and not act upon them. While he had the tumor, his level of control was severely lost and determined, but he also had still freely chosen, albeit with a lower threshold, needed to act. Another way to understand the compatibility of determinism and free will in the case of Mr. Off is to consider the relationship between brain activity and decision-making. 
While it is true that the changes in the brain chemistry can influence our decision-making process, it is also true that our decisions can influence our brain chemistry. Studies have shown that engaging in positive behaviors such as exercise and social interaction can increase the levels of dopamine and serotonin in our brain, leading to improved mood and cognitive function. You can observe this in Mr. Oft as he starts out with just a simple porn addiction when the tumor started, and that was enough to satiate him. However, over time, this wasn't enough to satisfy, and he chose to power the hedonistic treadmill with brothels and eventually the vile acts that he was arrested for. In this way, decisions have a reciprocal relationship with brain chemistry, and his actions can influence the very neural process that determine our behavior. The case of Mr. Oft is a tragic and deeply unsettling example of how the brain's physical structure can influence our behavior and decision making. The tumor in his orbital frontal cortex caused him to lose impulse control, which led him down a path of illegal and immoral actions. His case was groundbreaking, yes, but that's because it raised and potentially answered the philosophical question about the nature of free will and determinism. While Mr. Oft was not held fully responsible for his actions, his case highlights the need for further research and understanding of the brain and its role in behavior. If you are interested in learning more about the brain and its behavior, here is a video on the dark triad traits of a man named Logan Paul. These videos are a ton of work to research, write, produce, and if you're interested in supporting the production, I have opened up a Patreon down in the link below, and thank you to everyone that does so.